Lord, we thank you for that. Uh, in Jesus' precious name, let your river flow out of Freddie. Uh, let the words come forth with power and with boldness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm believing for breakthrough. Amen. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. I, I believe we all need breakthrough. The title of the message tonight is Breakthrough in Your Life. Amen. Amen. What do I mean by breakthrough? I, I mean, you need answered prayers. You yes. need uh, changes in family, in relationships, in uh, uh, finances, in job situations. So many different things. Yes. I and mean. we're always in need of breakthrough. And uh, I, I guess if we ever get to the point where we're, uh, we don't need breakthrough is that we've gone on over on the other side, but <laughs> as long as we're over here, we need breakthrough. Amen. So, so we're going to talk about that, and let me say that uh, spiritual re uh, revelation has power with it. When God speaks to you, uh, it carries enough power to bring itself to, to pass, so it's really important for us to hear from God, uh, but there's also this balance between revelation and mystery. <laughs> And so we have understanding of certain things, but there's in the kingdom, there are always mysteries. And that's really uh, a difference between religion and, and the kingdom. Uh, religion focuses on things that are known, such as knowledge, uh, doctrine, uh, character, and behavior. And uh, the kingdom uh, focuses on power and the signs and wonders of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But in the kingdom, there are mysteries. And uh, so if, if we have a religious mindset and we're just thinking about such things as doctrine and um, knowledge and our character and our behavior, we can make changes in those. And it's, it's like we're in charge. Uh, we, have, we can change our character. We can change our behavior. But a lot of times we start here uh, and our breakthrough is up here someplace. Hallelujah. And we can change our character and we can change our behavior. And but our trajectory often never goes up there to where the mm. breakthrough, where we need the breakthrough. The breakthrough is is up here at this level. Uh, but if we start down here, and uh, we change our character and our behavior, the things that we have control over, uh, then that may never cause us to reach where we need to go. And so I'm going to give you a different kind of approach. Again, we are, uh, our breakthrough is up here someplace. Mm -hmm. And uh, we start down here, but we really need to recognize that we need to have a different starting point. And our starting point ought to be not on, on the earthly natural realm, but in the spiritual realm and the heavenly realm. Now up here, see, we can modify our behavior because this is our identity. This is where who we are in Christ Jesus. We are dead and Christ lives in us. Mm -hmm. Now we can change our behavior uh, and, and it's, we're on the right trajectory to get the breakthrough. Hallelujah. But see, if we start at the wrong place, it's all about the starting place, about the perspective of where we start. If we start at the wrong place, we'll never get to the breakthrough. And that's the reason so many people never have the breakthrough. Hallelujah. God uh, uh, promises people things, and he has every intention for them to, to uh, be brought about, but, but they're thinking that it's all on God. But in reality, there's a process that's involved. And uh, we've been uh, working with some people lately and they needed a deliverance for their son. Um, but they're all, and the, the parents heard promises from God. Amen. God wants the son uh, delivered and restored. And, and so they think they can just go on with their life and not do anything. They have no responsibility. God has said it, it's going to come to pass. But in reality, there's a process, and we're involved in that process. Hallelujah. And that's what I want us to recognize. Uh, you know, the kingdom of God, uh, Mark 4, 11, 
talks about uh, Jesus took his 12 disciples and his closest followers aside, and they asked him about the parable the parables. Why I speak to people in, in parables? parables? Because they're mysteries. In the kingdom, there are mysteries. And uh, uh, see, in mathematics, it's a science. And you put two and two together, and you always get four. Two plus two is always four. But in the kingdom, there is this secret or this mystery. And we have to factor in the mystery. And often there is this, uh, uh, it's like a tension rod. It's a tension, and, and there is uh, pulling forces from the revelation that you have, and there's pulling uh, forces from the mystery, and, and all of that has to come into balance, and uh, this is not a science. It's not two plus two. It, it's much more than that, and, and we just we can just uh, don't really see everything. There are mysteries, and we have to be comfortable with living with mysteries, but we can seek the revelation and seek God. Uh, and we have a responsibility. If you want a breakthrough, you have a responsibility. God gives the promise, and you can find that promise. Uh, there are thousands of promises in the mm -hmm. Bible. You mm -hmm. can find mm -hmm. promises for your situation. And you might think, well, that's it's settled. I, I've, I've found a promise. But see, a promise given is not a promise activated. I mean. And so we also have to think about how to activate the promise. We have a responsibility. And like the family I was telling you about, the parents have a responsibility. And they didn't want to take on any responsibility. They had heard from God, and they just wanted to sit there and and let, and let God uh, perform it. And it would have been wonderful. And they're uh, involved in, well, this is the seventh month he's been in this condition. Surely, the, and seven means perfect. And so surely this is the time mm -hmm, that God's mm -hmm. going to change. But the seventh month went by and nothing happened. Right. Because they had a responsibility. They never sought God. They never looked for God. They never tried to hear from God. They just went on with their life. They didn't go into prayer and fasting or speaking the word. So, so each of us has a responsibility, but God gives you promises and you want those promises to come to pass. And when those promises come to pass, that's a breakthrough. And so we're going to be looking at this concept tonight. And, and the core of the message is in 1 Samuel. Uh, and it's the first chapter, mm -hmm. and it's about a woman named Hannah. Now, Hannah did not have a child. Uh, her husband had two wives, and uh, the other wife had many children, but Hannah had no children, and uh, she wanted a son. Amen. Well, that's, that's pretty obvious, and that's pretty uh, common that uh, a woman's married, and uh, she would want a son, and she uh, probably had prayed for years, but had never received a son. But now in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, it talks about her, her prayer. And the prayer is recorded this time. And, and the reason it's recorded this time is that it's different than all of the other prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's a prayer that's going to be answered. It's a prayer and of faith. It's a prayer of faith. Now, not only that, and there's several things I want to talk about here with uh, Hannah. Hannah's name means grace. And so she's a symbol of a person like you and me uh, because we have grace and God's grace is sufficient. And the grace, of course, mm -hmm. uh, comes through the Holy Spirit because he's called the spirit of grace. I mean. Okay, so this, I can really relate to Hannah and her situation that she needed a breakthrough, and I need breakthroughs, and you need breakthroughs. Amen, amen. And so uh, if we focus on her as a believer, she's praying a prayer, and, and let's just think about what the prayer says in the 11th verse. A and uh, she asked God for a, a, a son, but she said, I will give him to you. Yes, So amen. there is a big change in Hannah's life. Up until now, she'd just been asking for a son. She'd been asking over and over for a son. Give me a son. Give me a son. 
come down and fix my problem, fix my situation. That's the way so many people pray. Mm -hmm. They keep praying mm -hmm. the same prayer over, over and, and over, over and over and again. ask God to fix it. But in this case, see, there was a transformation in Hannah's thinking. That's the first point I want to make, a transformation in her. Up until now, she'd just been asking for a son, but now she is going to commit the son and give the son, dedicate the son to God. Mm -hmm. So we've gone for years in her life and, and uh, she has not had a son. And the other woman keeps having children, keeps having children year after year. She's having children. Hannah's not having any children, but now she's making a transformation. She's being transformed. Mm -hmm. That it's not all about her. All of a sudden it's about God. Because you see, Hannah wanted a son, but God wanted a, a prophet. prophet. Glory to God. Do you see that? Woo! Hallelujah. God wants a prophet. Mm -hmm. Hannah mm -hmm. wants a son. And so there has to come into alignment then her will, will and God's will. They have to come into alignment. They have to meet. And, and see, as long as you're out here and you have your will and God has his will and there's no alignment. So my second point is an alignment. There has to come mm -hmm. into alignment between what you want and what God wants. Or in other words, what God wants, you what you want has to line up with what God wants. I mean. And now all of a sudden it's there. Uh, the alignment. First, she's transformed. It's no longer about her. That's number one. Mm -hmm. She was transformed. You know, a Second Corinthians chapter three six says we are transformed from glory, glory to, to glory. glory. We're changed from glory to glory. Now that's an ongoing process. That's not a mm -hmm. one time thing. A, a one time thing is you, you get born again. But this is a day by day process. We are changed from I'm glory. glory. To to glory. glory. So this is not about being born again. This is about a day-to-day -day process where we're being transformed. Hannah was transformed from only uh, interested in herself, self-centeredness, to now she's focusing on what God is. She's there in the temple praying mm -hmm. in uh, 1 Samuel 1. She's praying, the priest is looking at her, and he thinks she's uh, drunk because she is in agony and she's in travail and, and she's bringing forth the son but it's not just uh, that one-sided request because now when she gets the son she's going to dedicate him to the lord and he's going to become god's prophet samuel Hallelujah. Ooh, this is, this is exciting for Amen. years, she had only <laughs> focused on herself. She had only, oh, me, myself, and I. I just want everything I, that I want. And, and I want God to fix all my problems and change everything. But now there has been a transformation in Hannah, and she's looking at what it is that God, God wants. wants. She wants a son, but God wants a prophet. And so she's made a vow. She dedicated uh, she's made a vow. And so here's the third point. She made a commitment. commitment. There has to be a commitment to God. So first mm -hmm. there's a transformation. So we have to be changed. See, we're over here. God, the Bible says God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And, and so we've got to come in line with him. Our thoughts have to come in line with him and we have to commit to his will and his plan. See, he has a a good plan for you, for each of you. And his plan calls for breakthroughs Amen. in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. He has a plan, a good plan for your future. That's what Jeremiah 29 11 says. He's got a good plan for your future. And it's going to involve breakthroughs. It's Hallelujah. going to involve answered prayers over and over again. Yes. Get your prayers answered. Get your, that's God's plan for you. Amen. And, and so we've got to walk into his plan. And, and we can't just have our agenda and our schedule and our plan down here and think we're going to get breakthroughs when he has a plan up here. We've got to bring them into alignment. Well, our plan has to align up with, his, with plan. his plan. 
and, and we have to be mm, transformed. This is excellent. We have to be Thank transformed <laughs> in our thinking, in, the, in our behavior, in our character. And we have to be transformed. We have to align with his will. And we have to be committed to do his will. You know, him. Jesus said, not my will, but That's your right. will. That's right. And so he was praying, not my will, but your will. So things have to come in line. They have to come in alignment. We have to commit to his plan and his purpose. And you can't just uh, develop your own schedule and your own agenda and think you're going to have a breakthrough. No, mm. no, we've got to be transformed into the image of his dear son, son Christ. Jesus, Jesus Christ. We have to be transformed. That's what he's doing. He's transforming you. The, the uh, breakthroughs are just steps along your path. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. That's but but his overall plan is for you to be transformed into the image of Christ. And so we've got to be transformed. If we're not being transformed, we're not getting breakthroughs. They go together. We've got to be transformed mm -hmm. in order to have the breakthroughs that he has for us. He has a plan, and his plan for you includes breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. And, and we've oh, got yeah. to be transformed, and we've got to come into alignment with his plan, and we've got to be committed to his plan and his will. Those are the three points. It's a very simple message tonight. We have to be transformed, being transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. So I start down here in the natural realm, but I have to be, I have to recognize that that's not a good starting point. I need to move on up here and put down my old natural life, pick up a higher spiritual life, let Christ come forth. So this is really the starting point that's going to bring forth breakthrough in our lives. We can't just stay in this natural realm because it says that the carnal mind is hostile mm -hmm. against God. And mm -hmm. the carnal mind cannot obey the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. It's hostile to God and it cannot obey his commands. So we've got to renew our mind uh, we, we've got to have a spiritual mind and we have to see ourselves the way God sees us and he sees us up here at a higher level. Hallelujah. When, we, when we see ourselves up here and that's where we are, we've been seated in heavenly places, places in Christ Jesus. I am dead, neither the less, nevertheless, I nevertheless, I live, but it's Christ that lives in me. So we need to see this is our true spark, starting point. You know, Paul said, uh, everything I have gained in this natural life, I count it loss. I, I just count it loss. He was a highly educated, yeah. highly intelligent yeah. person. He, he had studied the scriptures. He had, and he said, I count all of that loss. Oh, why, why? Because he wanted to know the resurrection power of the Christ and, and you know, be conformed to the image of his suffering. And, and so he, he had a higher uh, image of who he was and who he wanted to be. He saw himself dead. He saw all of his intellectual knowledge as lost. He wanted to gain Christ mm -hmm. and, and to uh, the resident to know the resurrection power of Christ and the suffering. Now we don't. A lot of times we don't want to talk about suffering, but right. Paul said it right there in Philippians three that I might be that I might know him and the resurrection of his power and the fellowship of his, his suffering. suffering. So this is really where we start. We start up here at the higher level, and then you bring in the right character, the right behavior, and you can move over to your, to your breakthrough. So it's breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. That's oh, the plan yeah. God has for you. How to have oh, yeah. this breakthrough that I'm talking about. Well, I want to... I want to go back to a point I made earlier. There are mysteries in the kingdom. See, if I'm just talking about the things I mentioned before, like doctrine and, and uh, knowledge and behavior, all of those things are known. There, and there's no mystery in that. But the kingdom, see, is mystery. Yeah. There's a mystery. There's secrets there. And these secrets are only revealed by the Holy Spirit. And so you, you can get all the knowledge you want to get 
And you still won't know the mysteries of God. You can read as many books as you want to or listen to as many tapes as you want to, but it's the Holy Spirit that's going to reveal the secrets unto you about the kingdom of God. Okay, now this is why formulas don't work. See, I said in math, two plus two equals four. That's formulas. A lot of people want to work by formulas. Okay, mm -hmm. this worked for, for a preacher so-and-so, and this worked for a minister mm -hmm. so-and-so, mm -hmm. and this worked for sister so-and-so, and so I'm going to do exactly the same thing and get exactly the same results. Well, but there's this mystery factor in there that has to be thrown in. And let's look at uh, a story about David. And there was this big enemy army that came up against him, the Philistines, and he inquired of the Lord. It's always good to inquire of the Lord. Amen. He inquired of the Lord, shall I go out there and attack them? And will you deliver them to me? And, and, and the Lord said, yes, I will. Just go on up there and attack them, and I will deliver them into your hand. Okay. So this really surprised the Philistines. They were defeated by David. Uh, and they had such a big, powerful army, and, and they couldn't understand why did we get defeated by this little uh, weak uh, enemy, David, uh, this uh, person that we despise. We despise mm -hmm. David, and, and how could he defeat us? And, and so the, here are the Philistines. They go back, and they regroup, and they get just as many soldiers as they had to, to begin with because they knew it was a fluke that little bitty David, the despised <laughs> David, had defeated them with his little bitty weak army. And so they said, we're going to do it again. And this time we're going to crush David and his army. And so they gathered up the same number of soldiers and they went up against him again. And they said, this time we're going to defeat him. Uh, everything's going to be exactly the same. Okay. Now, if if this was a science, if this was like mathematics, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then David would just simply go up against them exactly the same way and mm -hmm. get exactly the same results. A and if a formula worked one time, it will work the next time. If it was a science, okay? But this is the kingdom, and the kingdom has mysteries in it. And so David did what he should do. He did what we should do. He inquired of the, of the Lord. Lord again. So the situation was exactly the same. And if this was all uh, based on formulas, he could have gone back there and defeated them again. But this time he inquired of the Lord and the Lord said, no, don't go that way. Go around them this time. Uh -huh. Oh, you'll defeat them. But this time yeah, I want you to go, go around. Because see, there's a mystery and you can't, just find a formula that works and repeat it over and over again and expect it to get the same results every time because in the kingdom, there are mysteries and, and we only find out about the mysteries through the Holy Spirit. And so he said, this time, go around them, wait there in the trees until you hear the movement of the wind. Oh, yeah, in the mulberry, mulberry trees. trees. I'll just wait then. Okay, so here came the army just like they did the last time. They had exactly the same number of soldiers. They had exactly the same number of swords. They, they were going to defeat him. They knew they should have defeated him the first time. And, and so they came back. So it's exactly the same situation, but he doesn't attack them the same way because he follows the Lord because there are mysteries in the kingdom. So he's waiting there until he hears the wind in the mulberry trees. And when he hears the wind in the mulberry trees, he attacks the uh, enemy, and he defeats them. Mm -hmm. So he's defeated them twice. It was exactly the same number of soldiers and coming up against them exactly the same way, but he had to take a different approach. See, formulas in the kingdom don't work. And a lot of people want to use a formula. They find out about something that somebody used, and they want to use exactly the same thing without ever inquiring of the Lord. See, it's important to inquire of the Lord. I, I think about a woman that came to our um, mission one time, and she had $2. And she needed mm -hmm. $500 to pay bills, but she only had $2. Oh, <laughs> oh. So her first thought was, I'm going to stop at this 
store. Convenience store. And, and I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. A lottery ticket. ticket. Uh, because I've got $2, but I need $500. And uh, then I believe the Lord convicted her that she should not uh, buy that lottery ticket. So she brought it down, brought her $2 down to the uh, mission uh, where we were, and she put the $2 in the offering. Now, uh, when later <laughs> in that same uh, uh, service, Sherry, as the prophet said to her, you're going to receive $500. Oh, glory to God. I, I had no idea that she needed any money at all. This may have been one of the first times we'd ever laid eyes. That's on. right. That's right. But the prophet knew she was going to get mm -hmm. $500. Rather than taking the two and putting it for buying a lottery ticket, she put two in God's offering. And God gave her $500. Yes. Now. It was about a week later. She went to her mailbox and there was a an envelope, and in the envelope, uh, there was a check for $500. See, there was a breakthrough. She Amen. received a breakthrough. She needed $500. She only had $2. Okay, now could she have done this the next week, and could she have put $2 in the offering and got $500 back? See, that would have been that uh, the kingdom is such a science, and you mm -hmm. can know all about it. No, there are mysteries in it. Probably the next week, and I'm sure she put other money in into the offering in the subsequent weeks, but she didn't. It didn't work out exactly that way because there are mysteries. So you need to be led by the Holy oh, Spirit. Led by the Spirit. Now this is a very simple message tonight. This is this is not a formula. I'm not offering you a formula. I, I'm showing you what the uh, woman did. Hannah. She made three three things that were really important, and we should remember these uh, principles. She was transformed, and I believe we need to be mm -hmm. transformed. See, I, I see a lot of people uh, that they just want God to come fix their problems, and they don't want to do anything, and they don't want to make any changes themselves. That's right. They want to be just like they are. They're satisfied the way they are, and, and, and they're not making any changes, so they don't want to be transformed. Uh, second was to be aligned with God's purposes. She got in, in alignment with his purposes when, because she found out that he wanted a son uh, as a prophet. She wanted a son. He wanted a prophet. And that when that came together and there was an alignment between what she wanted and what he wanted, then she conceived. She, she <laughs> conceived a son, and his name was Samuel, and he was a prophet at, from an early age. I knew. And, and after he was about five years of age, so she, she kept him. She took care of him for those five, first five years, and then she took him to the priest, Eli, after that, about when he was about five years of age. And uh, she said, here, he's dedicated to the Lord, but she knows every year she'd bring him clothes. She'd make him a little coat. And she kept supporting him, helping him, but she had dedicated him to the Lord. So she was committed. She made a commitment. Yeah. I, if you give me a son, I'm going to give him to you. You give me a son, I'm going to give him to you. See, you see that commitment? See the vow that she made? She made a vow to the Lord and she lived by it and, and uh, lived by that vow that she was going to give the, her son to God. And God used him as a mighty prophet, and he anointed two kings. See, uh, he was first a judge. Samuel was, of course, a prophet and a judge. He was the last a judge in a line of long judges mm -hmm. uh, over Israel. And then uh, it was a real transition. They went to kings. And so he anointed the first king, which was Saul, and he also anointed the second king, which was David. And so he had this uh, critical role mm, that he played mm. in, in the people yeah, of the God. History. Yeah. And, and so those were all mysteries. And, and Hannah certainly didn't understand that, but she got hold of this one thing that she had to get her, uh, her will and plan in line with God's will and plan. Hannah wanted a son. God wanted a prophet. And when she uh, was changed herself and, and was willing to yield to God's plan and bring in 
uh, an alignment, her plan and will with God's plan and will. And she was committed to it. And year after year, she went up there and made that little coat for Samuel. Year <laughs> after year, she was committed. You know, a lot of a lot of people uh, make a commitment, make a vow, and then they don't fulfill it. Uh, Jonah was such a person. That's he, right. He had made a vow, uh, and then he ran away from God. He, after a while, he forgot about it. But you know, when the when the big fish uh, ate him up, he, he he began to remember. Oh, I I made some, a vow. There's some things I should have done. I I made a vow, and I haven't I haven't fulfilled it. I haven't been committed to my word. I haven't been committed to my vow. But I tell you, Hannah was committed to her vow, and God gave her a son, and uh, then uh, she gave him back and dedicated mm -hmm. it to the Lord. Now, what I want you to see is that there's not always this science uh, where you do this thing, you get this result, and you get it immediately. Sometimes there are delays, and sometimes you you make a uh, an investment today, or you or you make, uh, you give a cost today, and, and what uh, you pay as a price today, mm. it may be your transformation down the road. It, mm. it may not just happen, uh, just like that woman that gave the $2 and just a few days later got the $500. There may be delays, and we have to be, we need, need to be investing in God's kingdom on a continual basis. You know, it said, it talks about uh, a wise man puts his bread on the water and it's going to come, come back, back on every way. every way, but he's got to be keep putting, putting the bread out there and, and, and then it's going to be coming back on every wave. And so uh, you need to make, there are prices and costs to be paid and, and we may not see exactly uh, an immediate result that there may be something down the line that happens. But we need to be investing in God's kingdom on a continual basis because we don't know when we need to break through. But let me tell you, mm -hmm. God wants you to have a life of continual breakthrough, breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. And we need to be doing our part now because what we did yesterday is going to be showing up today. And right. what goes on in our life today. Right. And what we do day after day is going to be showing up uh, later on. If we're sinning, uh, there are going to be consequences of sin. But if we are following God and we're doing his will and his purpose, he is a rewarder. And we may not see the reward immediately. We may not do something today and get the reward tomorrow, but it will come because yes, he is a reward of those who diligently, diligently seek, seek him. him. There are rewards in the kingdom, but there are also this other aspect that I want you to recognize there are mysteries and so everything is not this uh, basic science where you do this uh, uh, have this effect and you get this result or you you do this uh, uh, chemical reaction you get this particular result over and over again there are mysteries and we have to be comfortable living with this tension between our revelation and our mysteries we have to be satisfied uh, and understanding and mm -hmm. trusting in God that, that there are things that we don't yet know that have not yet been revealed to us, but we can trust him mm -hmm. that, that, you know, the things that he reveals to us, that belongs to us. But there are some mysteries that he still holds and that belongs to him. So we just do the best we can and walk day by day doing the best we can, continually be inquiring of the Lord and be transformed from glory to glory. And let's get our plans in alignment with God. Amen. And then finally, let's be committed to do his will. Thank you for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Thank you. We get lots of calls from different individuals uh, for prayer. And I get prayers. Um, I get a prayer request for people who want to be uh, healed and delivered, especially from uh, diabetes uh, and from other um, uh, illnesses. And but when I ask those people, you know, are you committed to eating what the Holy Spirit wants you to eat? You know, their their answers are different. And some of their answers are, 
oh, well, I really like sweets and I eat a lot of cookies and I eat a lot of cakes. And well, that's, you know, if you're committed to um, the promise that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed, uh, then you will obey what he tells you to eat. Okay, that's one example. Another example is financially. People call me and they say, oh, you know, we need extra finances. We've got a car repairs. We've got to uh, pay our, our rent every month and uh, we don't have enough finances coming in. And so the first question I ask them is, are you giving into the kingdom of God? Because that's the way finances come. If you're, if you're in the kingdom, then no longer, listen to what I'm saying, no longer can you operate in the carnal economy. If you're in the kingdom economy, you have to follow the rules of the kingdom. And then the, in the kingdom, it says, give and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall be given to you. Hallelujah. That's the way it works. And so when I asked them the question, are you giving into the kingdom? Oh, well, I, I try to give a little bit here and a little bit there. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to do it. They need to be like Hannah and be fully committed to being a giver. And if you're in the kingdom, that's who, that's who you are. You're a giver. Hallelujah. That's, that's the principle that is uh, involved in receiving more finances, more income, receiving promotions. Uh, this is, this is uh, you have to be a giver. And so I find that people are wanting prayer to fix their problems, but they're not willing to be transformed in their thinking. And they're not willing to commit uh, to the word of God and do the principles uh, of the word. And what was the third one? Align with God's and they, will. And they don't want to line up with God's will. Uh, you know, Sherry, I, I think about a woman who contacted us one day on Monday and she said she wanted to be healed by Friday yep. because she's going to go see the doctor. She had a doctor's mm -hmm. appointment on Friday. So she made the doctor's appointment way out much earlier. But now it's getting close right. to the doctor's appointment and she wanted to be healed before she went to him because she didn't want him to uh, have to do anything for her, uh, which is a strange request. And, and I suspect the time Friday rolled around and, and she probably wasn't healed. That's just my thinking, not that she reported back to us. But it was a strange request. I've made a doctor's appointment and I've made this uh, several weeks earlier and here on Friday, I'm gonna to have to go see him and I don't want him to find anything, but I know I've got problems, but I wanna be healed by Friday. Well, <laughs> I mean, you've got, to, you've got to look, there's mysteries and there's mm -hmm. seeking God and committing to God. Okay, Sherry. Well, then one of